بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الملأ أفتوني في أمري بالقيس كونسالس وثا تشيفس وين شي ريدز دا لاتا فروم سليمان عليه الصلاة والسلام and she decides to consult with the chiefs. So she tells them that uh, give me your opinion, give me your suggestions, advise me in this matter and I cannot make any decisions without your consultation. So come and give me some advice. So they replied قَالُوا نَحْنُ أُلُوا قُوَّةٍ وَأُلُوا بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ we have great strength, we've got the ability, the potential for war and we've got the numbers, we've got the preparedness, we've got the strength, we've got everything we need. So if you want to go to war, go to war, we're ready. we good to go. Means we've done all the prepping, we feel we are competent. If you decide, well, amru ilayki, fanduri madha ta'murin. It's your command, you decide and you make the decision so whatever you see fit we will we will follow you so what she replied after hearing the opinion wa inni mursilatun ilayhim bihadiyatin so i will go and send them some hadaya some uh, presents hadaya fanadhiratun bima yarji'ul mursalun i will send a gift to sulaiman according to his status and I want to evaluate his reaction, whether he will accept the gift or reject it. Will he impose a tax? What uh, options are there? Uh, so as Qatara has mentioned that may Allah rahim Allah, may Allah have mercy on her and be pleased with her. How wise? She was as a Muslim and as a Kafira and Id Idolater Mushrika. So firstly she understood how gift giving has a good effect on people because maybe he will not wage war, he will accept the gifts, leave us alone, maybe impose a tax pay him every year and he will not have to fight. Or in another tafsir of Ibn Abbas she told her people, if he accepts the gift, then he is a king, so we will fight him. But if he does not accept the gift, he is a prophet, a, 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 a nabi, a rasul, and we will have to follow him. So many lessons here, one was she was a disbeliever, but yet she understood the importance of mashwara and mutual consultation. They should be part of our everyday life. Preparing for Akhirah and preparing for the trials that will follow towards Akhirah in our dunya we lives, consultation is very important and here she consulted the experts, the people that are Ahl. So in different aspects of your life, you'll need to consult with different people and uh, consultation should be part and parcel of our life. Secondly, they told her that we have the power, the might, the expertise, the skill. So when we are preparing as well as Bab wise, you may have the big walls, the security fences, the CCTV cameras, etc., all the equipment. You might have the gear, but as a believer, you need to identify solutions. So you say, I'm ready to go to the ground, I'm ready to tackle everybody that comes on my turf. But sometimes making peace is a better option, finding a simpler solution in life as well. So not necessarily always we should have one mindset of going full out, uh, but if there's an option and an, a secondary uh, route, then we should opt for that. So we know somebody who has a cell phone and uh, they don't have a cover for protection nor a screen guard. So just a mindset for us to understand. So um, 
if a, a person is a prepper, then they would say, okay, what's the most secure cell phone that's rugged? So he drops, it falls, then I will get that cell phone. Then if I do get a phone as well, uh, I will find one that's got a very good uh, cover, secure cover that will protect it if it falls. Maybe it even water resistant, etc. Then a screen guard. So I've done all the protection, but the glass should not break and shatter because that's a vulnerable point. So when we asked, when he was asked it, what's the hikmah in wisdom? He said, firstly, the, the developers of the phone make a lot of effort to enhance the beauty of the phone. So if you're going to put a cover, then you take in away the beauty. So I cannot enjoy the beauty. Secondly, I, I cannot enjoy the slimness of the phone because a lot of effort and resources over many, many decades was to evolve where the smartphone is so small and compact. That makes it very bulky. Thirdly, uh, which is the most important point, is I need to train myself discipline. Discipline. What discipline? If I'm not disciplined enough to look after my phone and it falls and it breaks and the screen cracks, etc., then I should face the consequences. So, the fact that I was negligent and it falls and there is a consequence, it needs. I need to train myself. Like we knew somebody used to go into the paintball field and used to wear no protective gear. Somebody asked him, that Azrat, you got shot so much, you've got blue marks. Why no protective gear? He said, my mother taught me to go in full out. Take the bullets, take the blue marks, take the injuries. Why? Next time you'll be better if you don't feel the pain. You won't evolve. So I'm ready to... So it's a mindset. We're thinking of prepping, but prepping, our mind as well is important. So uh, we have to uh, come onto the right mindset as well. Then thirdly with Pilkis, after that, uh, when the gifts were sent, she wanted to see the reaction. So she put Suleiman to the test. So likewise, we have many ideas, we've got a lot of gear, we've got a lot of tools, we've got a lot of equipment, but it collects dust, it's stored away, it's never on you, it's never used, you never put it to the test, you never got the skill for that. So you can have the, the, the biggest armory, but uh, uh, you, 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 you unarmed, you, you unprotected, because you have no clue the basics. Of, 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 uh, of utilizing those tools and preserving it as well. So it's very important. So it's not only about planning for big things, but it's the finer details, the mindset of getting the last, some, sometimes a person's got the, the um, we can call it Mercedes Benz of something, but he doesn't have the skill whatsoever. Like the story, a person, a very a meek little man walked into a restaurant and he said, does anybody own a Rottweiler outside? So one big biker stood up and said, yes, it's mine, what about it? So the meek man said, well, I think my chihuahua has just killed him. So the biker, very upset, said, what are you talking about? How could your puny little chihuahua kill my mighty Rottweiler? So my, my, my mighty, my dangerous, my vicious, my ferocious, so the little man said, uh, it seems she got stuck in your dog's throat. Seems she got stuck in your dog's throat. So yes, he has a, a ferocious animal. Nobody can take down, but it went down some other way. So sometimes we, we, we plan big, but we forget the, the, the important details. So sometimes when we're supposed to prepare, we don't. And we're not supposed to be prepared. We're preparing. So after everything happened, it's over. Now we're taking steps. Uh, nothing happens. We lose traction. We lose Josh. Uh, we start uh, becoming lax, illiquid. And that situation recurs. And we get caught up again. Like a man went to the vet to collect his dog. The vet came carrying the dog and said, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to put your dog down. The man started crying, he burst into tears. Why, why do you have to put my dog down? So the vet said, because he's too heavy, because he's too heavy. So uh, 
realizing the need of the time. Busy with vehicle safety, anytime a person perceives a risk, um, we need to know what's the protocols which we need to follow. Who's on speed dial? How fast can you inform them? How will they get to you? How fast can they get to you? Who's the nearest A, B, C, D, E, etc. Likewise, when your vehicle breaks down, uh, do you stay in your vehicle locked up? Do you get out? Do you create a two rule uh, impression where you get out of the passenger seat and it looks like uh, you more people. You get back out from the rear seat. Um, do you accept assistance easily? Do you trust people? Um, what do you do in that situation? If you are followed home, what do you do? Uh, identifying different threatening situation. So somebody may be in the next vehicle and indicating that you've got a flat tire, there's something wrong with your vehicle, do you pull over? They've already marked you, they've identified you, they know what potential you have. So they make up excuses. Likewise, uh, a person getting to uh, be stopped by a, a tap and go, a fake accident. So they will just jab you at the back or your car was parked, they tempered with your vehicle, they tempered with the tire, they tempered with the exhaust. You've got a convertible vehicle, you've got sunroofs, when do you keep it open, when do you keep it closed? In a, in a vehicle hide, uh, hijack situation or in a, in a position where you are compromised, do you use your timber, do you threaten, do you challenge the, the hijacker? Uh, do you keep your hands still visible, memorizing details of the hijacker, pondering of what your next move is? The person is in a vehicle, hijacking, kids are with you. Uh, take out the key of the out of the ignition slowly uh, so, and tell him the kids are in the vehicle and, and, and get them evacuated. He's, he's in a pack in panic situation. He might drive away with the kids. So you've got a, a negotiating tool. Uh, have, have you ever drilled your kids in hijacking? Who's sitting where? And if that happens and we need to evacuate the vehicle, then smallest to eldest, what's the youngest to eldest, what's the evacuation protocol? Um, in the situation, lifting your arms, showing that you are harmless, uh, showing that you are ready to cooperate, etc. When you're traveling on the road and you see obstacles, do, 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 do you become a hero, want to uh, clear the road? Maybe it's an ambush. So identifying uh, situations and um, knowing what to do. Women that generally fight back in a um, attack situation are more likely to uh, escape and not be raped. Uh, if a person is abducted in the trunk of the vehicle, breathing exercises, keeping your cool, uh, can you, can you, do you know how to remove the tail light? You know to, how to open the, the boot? Do you know and have, have prepped yourself of escaping from the trunk of a vehicle? Have you been in your vehicle and, and tried to escape? Do you have a light there? Do you have torch? So in the darkness you can see. Do you keep a screwdriver, a crowbar, something so that you can escape? Something that you can uh, a, a use as a makeshift wef a weapon to defend yourself from the abductor. Likewise, you have wire cutters, a knife to cut yourself free. Maybe pepper spray. So if, if you can't escape, then when the abductor opens the boot, to pepper spray them. Um, not waiting for you to reach your final destination. You may reach in the wilderness, a desolate place. So while the car is moving, what needs to be done? Have you tied yourself with cable uh, ties with uh, tape and, and try to escape? There's, there's, there's easy ways where a person can escape, but it needs practicing. So uh, if it's a kidnapping situation and uh, they don't put you in the boot, in the trunk, but they place you in the vehicle, do you have an emergency backup? Some people carry pepper grenades. When you get in the vehicle, activate it. So you don't want to be taken. Once you are taken, the, the chances of recovery are very slim. Illa mashallah. If it's the amateurs, uh, possibly the, the professionals. Uh, illa mashallah. Why do you travel with all your banking cards? Why do you have an app of your banking on your phone which is visible? 
this app so you can hide uh, the shortcuts so these are all uh, processes which which we need to 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 train our mind when you get into the car women generally put on makeup uh, or they catch up on their phone their messages so uh, simple processes which we need to train ourselves people are traveling uh, on a bus on a train somebody wants to make conversation with you we tell them your occupation your business what you do etc so restrict information social media is one of the biggest problems so the go golden rule is information security and if you think so your information is not out there then you're living in a dream world somebody knows your payroll somebody knows or your business turnovers. Nobody knows when you pay your staff salaries. This information leaks out. It's very easily available. So don't live in a dream world thinking that your information is not accessible. So in thieves need information to plan and attack. So you have to have a, a protective strategy for information. And uh, thieves go to the extent. You think so you're living in an estate, you are safe. They will rent a place inside the estate and, and plan successful robberies. So you never underestimate these people. They do smaller robberies for bigger robberies. So if they needed to rob a bank, they will do few robberies. Now they need money to rent a the place. They need to buy equipment. They need to pay staff for information. Um, they will borrow through what equipment they need to borrow through the safe of the bank. So they do small jobs for bigger jobs robbed uh, police stations not only the weapons they want the police clothing as well they want the police badges amongst your uh, employees uh, do you have people that are, have an alcohol problem so they will get them to the shabin get them drunk exact information you randomly to do light detector tests on your staff um, so your movement patterns your habits your lifestyle travel plans, itinerary, your, your, your layout of your, your offices, where do you keep your safes at home, etc. All those details, security measures and, 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 and uh, planning, operational planning needs to stay confidential. Your, your, your patterns, your habits, uh, these are very important, whether it's your routine, the wife's daily routine, shopping, visiting friends, picking up schedule, social activities, uh, information, corporate information. So that's very important. So they, they, they would be surveillance in you. So whether it's a kidnapping, assassination, criminals, um, surveillance is very important. So you notice vehicles, what type of vehicles, vans, uh, patrols, etc. Information, how easily is it accessible? The, the, the things that you throw in your dustbin, you get it shredded, is it disposed of, is it accessible? When you book places, whether it's for a meeting, whether it's for meals, do you have your real name, do you have a code name? When you have courier services de delivering things to your houses, do you have a real name, do you have a code name? Likewise, when you hire in uh, contractors, whether it's a tiler, the electrician, there's a lot of breach of information. So many syndicates operate and use these people to extract information. To use the same places all the time, whether it's a restaurant, uh, etc. If there is threat, who do you notify and you, you think of a potential threat? Who are the important people that need to be know in the circle? And uh, to, to establish such a system where all this information is, 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 is confidential. Do you have anything, uh, a tracking devices? So, so some of the things we cannot mention here because it gets in the wrong hands, it's sensitive information. So the different type of tracking devices are out there. Where do you keep your tracking devices? Um, uh, when, when, when we have a press release, whose pictures, whose home details, whose uh, information is leaked, uh, your, your pictures, you, you got it on your profile, somebody sees it already, it's on your Facebook, they will identify you. So, being very cautious and careful. Social activities, routely, weekly, yearly routine. When somebody is being kidnapped, the whole mudakara, where the person is kidnapped on the whole process, and uh, he's going to calculate the amount of minutes uh, from the time he is kidnapped. Maybe he'll be blindfolded. 
how long it will take, where they are going, which direction. So if I was in a certain route every day, I will know. They will go right and they will go here and this is the place. So you know in idea where they are taking you. So those, that the person needs to be prepped. Likewise, uh, do you stop at a place where there's boom gates and then you enter. So is it an estate? So all these details of, 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 of collecting information. Now you know detail to you. You're in the background. Is there a train station? What noises do you hear? Now, each family needs to have a language which they learn. So when you ask for proof of life and they talk on the phone or they try to convince you to pay the money, then you're going to tell them, let me convince them. But they will give the money so you will have a code language. For example, um, when a person coughs and he uses the word sleep, it will mean the amount of people that are with me. So he will cough and he say, I can't sleep since 4 a.m. in the morning. So you will know there's four people. Uh, a, you will refer to Bravo uh, or uh, uh, ethnicity or uh, nationality or race, etc. So you have code words in those sentences that you use, which will give away information. Like say, example, you drove for around 15 minutes. So you said, 4.15 a.m. means four people and 15 minutes to my destination. So a code language is very important uh, to, to, to identify uh, perpetrators, etc. and to give information. Getting information afterwards is good, but while a person is uh, uh, captive to give information will help a lot. Amal for today is to make wudu properly. A person who makes wudu properly, not to rush, to, and, and, and to be hastily, but to do it properly, hatta yakhruja naqiyan min al A person will be free from gunas wa akhiru dawana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.